Welcome back, uh, baseball fans. This is the stunning, eliminating the Baltimore Orioles video. What we're looking at right now is the team stats for 2020. The year they won the World Series last year. They went 36 and 12, going all the way. Uh, they were 32 and 12, and they played the Reds in the World Series, swept them four straight. Quayer got two of his 11 wins in that World Series. Um, now this era, you might notice, is a mixed era. In other words, there are players from 1984 added to players from 69, 70, and 71. So it means that the talent pool for the whole league is bigger because you've got uh, guys in the 80s who don't play in the 60s and guys in the 60s who don't play in the 80s. So you have more players available to get drafted into the league, meaning that you have more better teams. And when you look at this Oriole team, things that stand out are... Cal Ripken is on the this era team, along with you know the, the normal people you would expect. And Eddie Murray is on this team. And uh, Mike Boddicker is on this team. These are all stars from the 80s, combined with the Orioles stars from the 60s. And you see how talented this group is, and why they were so good and won the, won the World Series. Uh, the most valuable Orioles, it's hard to pick from, but probably Frank Robinson. He hit 337, 7 homer, 33 RBI. Not a lot of homers out of this bunch. Nobody had 10, for instance, but they were distributed nicely. A little bit of speed with Paul Blair. They hit 260 as a team, and the team ERA is 384, a little high on the ERA side, but um, that was because the league ERA was up in general. Dick Hall had 10 saves. So he did his thing with a 193 ERA, closing out, uh, you know, Oriole wins. No losses for Dick Hall. The other three relievers are pretty ordinary. You'll see Don Eddie, Jay Hal, those guys, ERAs over seven. They didn't help out things much. Um, and, uh, you know, it was uh, right time, right year, all that sort of thing. And now what we're going to do is... You see the team hitting 266 and th with a 384 ERA. We're going to look at the 2021 year. And you see the batting average drops as we expect. We said the uh, the talent was going to be a little weaker. So the Oriole batting average dropped to 240 and the ERA improved to 342. Uh, let's start with pitching. You see Dick Hall did the, sa did the same thing. He had 10 saves for the second year in a row. But he lost a couple games. His ERA was higher. Cuellar... Um, yeah, the hundred and, over 100 innings again, but only seven wins. Palmer was pretty ordinary. Um, Pat Dobson pitched nicely. But it, the problem was the offense. Without Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray padding the stats, they had Bobby Gritch playing shortstop. He hit 310, no homer, 12 RBI, and was their lone all-star. Uh, Boo Pal played first base with his 1970 MVP card, and he hit 227 with it. Frank Robinson, his average dropped 60 points to 270, yet oddly enough, he had the same 7 homer and 34 RBI. Speed is still barely there, 4 stolen bases. Again, no nobody in double digits in home runs. Buford walked a lot, had a 423 on base, that was nice to see. But in general, you know, they, they played 58 baseball games last year, and they're eliminated after playing just 40 in a season where they weren't the best team in their division, Boston, and having to play in the wild card round uh, got eliminated three games to one for the second time in three years by the Detroit Tigers. You know, a team that was below 500. Uh, if this scenario would have played out in the National Football League last year, there would have been a different Super Bowl champion other than the, the team that won it. Because, yeah, it's the same scenario. The, the division winner with a losing record played a wild card team destined to win it all. But it didn't work out. The Orioles didn't win it all. So, there you go. That's how it happens. It's happened to the NFL as, as well. We've seen losing teams win an occasional playoff game. 
knocking out a good wild card team. And so it's happened, and uh, it's happened here. So, astonishingly, let's open up the Oriole pack here and see what the Orioles are going to do with the remaining years in their dynasty. If you want to consider this the 69 portion over, then the same level of disappointment is there. The 69 Orioles had the best record in baseball, but they got dusted by the Mets four games to one. And the same iteration pretty much got dusted by the Tigers. So they got to improve. They have two more cracks with a lot of 70 and 71 cards to add to their roster ahead of those two World Series teams. Let's see who's leaving and who's coming back. And uh, again, it's good to have one world championship in your book if you're the Orioles, because it's not gonna get any easier as this team finds tough competition in their own division with Boston, and you got Oakland, you got a young Kansas City team, you got the Oakland A's starting their dynasty. You figure, you know, the Tigers and the uh, Indians will figure it out sooner or later. So looking at guys who are going away, you get an idea of the guys who are coming back and the guys who are probably going to be gone. But these are the 12 guys who are going to come back next year and try and right the wrong, from wrong. Looking at the split, we have the correct suggested split of seven hitters and five pitchers. We got a catcher and a first baseman. And Davey Johnson at second, Brooksy at third. Bobby Gritch can play short during this era. And you have Buford and Walton in the outfield. Walton can be a DH. And you got five pitchers. Um, you have, gee, you only got three 20 game winners here. You got Dobson, 20 and 8, Palmer, 20 and 10, McNally, 21 and 5. It's hard to feel bad for the Orioles, isn't it? You got two lefties in the bullpen. Harden's okay. He was the long, long man. 354. But he got a World Series ring in 145 innings for the 70 Orioles. And this Steve Barber's an interesting player. He actually was on the uh, Angels in 72. Had a f really late in his career. Had a stellar year. And the Orioles acquired him in that Don Baylor trade. Um, but this is a nice guy to have... And so I'm, I'm assuming Cuellar is going to come back, and that will be your three lefties. So let's just go check that out. Let's see what the Orioles do with those uh, 69 uh, players so that they can return to the World Series, if possible. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, 69 guys, and uh, it's... I think it's pretty clear cut who's coming, who's going. We're going to start with Ruben Amaro, who was a free agent addition. I don't have to go any further because he plays through 69. So that this will wrap up the Ruben Amaro career. Uh, he could play everywhere in the infield in his 69 year. Played mostly with the Phillies, Yankees, Angels. So he will be retired. He helped the or Orioles out as a flex option backing up all infield positions so he will move to retirement next up is Paul Blair and pretty obvious the Orioles are going to keep their Orioles and they're going to cut everybody else so here's Blair so 69 they're going to miss this because 69 was Blair's big year 26 home runs so he's got four more cracks at it here actually he plays the Orioles uh, beyond that but 69, he's not going to do this again, folks. He's not going to 26 homers. He's not going to uh, get 11 MVP votes. Actually, he gets 13 MVP votes in 74. Though statistically, he's nowhere near this good a player. Um, so, in the next few years, I'm thinking you might as well go with the 70 Blair because he has 18 homers, 438 slugging. Batting average is about the same. 72, he's got a bad year. It's the only year you don't want to take. So Blair's going to come back more than likely with a 70 card. And trying to do the logic here. So if you do the 70, you could do the 73 all-star card. 
but in 74 he gets MVP votes as well. Most likely you can do 70, play that card out, and then bump him up to the 74, and not even use the 73. Or you can just bump him up to the 73, use it for four years, and then go to 74. So there's flexibility in what you want to do with Paul Blair. Alright, the next player, Jimmy Hall. And he's not coming back, we're pretty sure. He does play the 1970. He was a free agent they picked up from the Twins. And the only mystery left is, did they make a Jimmy Hall card so you can put him on waivers? 85 plate appearances on two teams. I don't think so, but we can always look it up. Cubs and Braves. So let's go to the Gary Stratomatic resource. An excellent resource, has all the roster pages. SuperDs.tripod.com slash SOMrosters.html. We're going to go to the 1970 reprint, which is what we're using. See if we have a Jimmy Hall and the Cubs or the Braves. Go to the National League. Atlanta Braves. Uh, I don't see a Jimmy Hall. And going to the Cubs right next to him. I don't see a Jimmy Hall. And then we'll go to the extra players for Atlanta. No Jimmy Hall. And the Cubs. No Jimmy Hall. At the very bottom is the nameless cards. Guys who are on two uh, played on two teams. Not there either. So, we exhausted our attempt to keep Jimmy Hall off the retirement list. We cannot do it. We have to retire Jimmy Hall, even though he 85 played appearances in 1970. Thank you, Jimmy Hall. Next up, Elrod Hendricks. And he'll play a nice little career here. Eventually be the bullpen coach for the Orioles. 69. That was actually one of his better years. 716 OPS. If you take a 71 card, it's almost the same thing. 250, 720. And actually, 70 is not too bad either. I think you bring him back. Left-handed catcher. The only reason you would not bring Elrod Hendricks back is if you had uh, too many keepers. Then you put him on waivers. Hope he passes through waivers. Then you sign him. Sort of like... Sort of like moving a player to your practice squad in football. Similar. When you're hoping that another team doesn't scoop him up. Frank Robinson will play a nice long career. From the Reds to the Orioles. And then he'll start bouncing around. But he will actually... Jesus, his final memory in Baltimore will be Game 7 of the 71 series. And then in 72 he goes to the Dodgers and the Angels and Cleveland. But the Orioles will bring him back. He won't have quite the magnificent year he just had in 69, but he's going to go to the next two All-Star games and be darn close and gets 10 MVP and then three MVP votes the next two years. So this is, again, another no-brainer. Uh, Frank Robinson's coming back. No surprise there. All right, now let's go to the pitchers. And we're going to start with Crazy Horse. We know he's coming back. The MVP of the uh, 2020 World Series, Mike Cuellar. And crazy, old crazy horse. They, do they have him in here as nicknames? They normally give you nicknames here. I'm not saying and call it crazy horse, but whatever. Um, so, believe it or not, at 23-11 with a 238 ERA, he was not given an invitation to the All-Star Game. In his first year on the Orioles, after a disappointing final year at age 31 with the Astros. <laughs> the Orioles said, you know what, come to Baltimore. We can, you know, you can work on that screwball and you will be magnificent for a nice half dozen years or so. And that's what happened, including three straight World Series appearances for the dude. So, he won the Cy Young in 69. And I guess if we scroll, I don't know if we're going to see that. I can't see if we've got any more Cy Youngs in there. All-star appearances in 70 and 71 and 74. 20 game winners three times. It doesn't really matter. You pick a year. Um, plenty of time to figure out which year you want to take for Cuellar. But you got your fourth keeper. And now comes to another non-Oriole, Ron Taylor. And uh, he was 
Unfortunately for Ron, he got himself a World Series ring for those 69 Mets, and he did. Clo he closed out 13 games for that 69 Met team that won the World Series. Unfortunately, he went to the dark side in the draft, ended up on the Orioles, and now he's home to watch. He's going to watch the Mets on TV, apparently. Um, he's a free agent, I think. Uh, he's not quite as good, again, as he is in 69. He was outstanding for the Mets in 69. But he's still good in 70 and 71. We know he qualifies for waivers in 70. So we're going to put Ron Taylor on waivers. Thank you for the one year. We thought it would help the Orioles repeat. It did not. But maybe Taylor goes to the Mets next year. And lastly, Dick Hall. And this is uh, setting up a situation I set, said before regarding Elrod Hendricks not being a keeper. Uh, Dick Hall will certainly take over the fourth spot in the keeper list ahead of Elrod. He's more valuable. Uh, in 70, his whip is still below one. He's 10-5. and five. He gets that World Series ring. He's got to run it back. So Dick Hall is a keeper. So the Orioles have five keepers, one waiver, two retires. They need four, two, and two. They could simply put Elrod Hendricks on waivers, which is probably what they should do, or they could let the phone ring and see if somebody needs a left-handed hitting catcher. I don't like the trade route. I think I'd rather put him on waivers and I hope that nobody takes him because he only hit 240 and bring him back to the Orioles. Obviously, you're keeping Paul Blair, Frank Robinson, Mike Cuellar, and Dick Hall. That's carved in stone. So, the Elrod Hendricks roster spot is tenuous right now. Um, and... It looks like by the time the draft rolls around, I doubt anybody's going to call the Orioles up and offer a trade. So he'll probably end up on waivers. And at that point, he can sign with anybody, including the Orioles. So that's it tonight. The surprise elimination of the 2020 world champion Baltimore Orioles. They simply become the uh, 21st team eliminated, or, or the 12th. 11 teams are left uh, in the 12-team playoff field. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.